Uh -huh. And then, okay, got it. Um, and then, hold on just a second here because I can't see what I'm doing. I know I'm making everybody dizzy with trying to focus this. I'm going to stop. <laughs> you can look at the picture in your in your instructions. Okay. okay, so I started with one of the trees and just kind of got it as used a piece that I could get it as close as I could. Put a little bit of glue, down, painted down a little bit of glue, and then um, pushed it down with my thumb, right? Which pulls, which cracks it. Yeah. And oh. then you kind of use your the point of your exacto to pull them apart a little bit. Let them set till the till the glue grabs, and then you can go with your exacto knife and trim the shape. Oh. Okay. okay. So. That's, that's I did, great... tried to do the smaller things first and worked at in adjacent areas. So like when I did the, the road and you can kind of see that at the bottom of the second page, I did, you know, the snow up to the road, trimmed that, then put in the light gray eggshells up against that, trimmed that, then did the white in the middle of the road, trimmed that, you know, oh just kind of kept working. Out. So, and it'll go quickly. It'll go quickly, unless you're doing something really big. <laughs> well, uh, my question, though, is do you paint the background so that, because if it shows in between the eggs, I mean, a mosaic has a little bit of space between the, the yeah, shells. Yeah, I, I put a little bit of dark gray paint on the bottom of the, of the piece of wood that's in this tray okay. um, before I started putting the eggshells down. Yeah. I don't know. You could probably even use, use a marker and do that or something like I that. I would think so. Yeah, for, probably. Uh, yeah. You just want to have a little color in it. So, what, I, what I've found is that as you're positioning your medium sized eggshell pieces, they can be like tiddlywinks and you press one area and then <laughs> and it goes oh, flip shooting. away. <laughs> so watch I, well, where they're going. Yeah, one of the things that I found, and I'd never done this before, I'd always applied glue with the tooth, the proverbial toothpick, right? And I, I had some really cheap nylon brushes that I'd bought over at Hobby Lobby. And I squeezed a little bit of my tacky glue out onto my, you know, my lid. And then I kept my brush nice and damp. And then I would use the brush to just kind of paint a little bit of the area, put the eggshell down, crack it, hold it down a little bit, move it around with my little exacto knife, let it grab, and then I could, you know, it, it wouldn't jump all over the place. Mm -hmm. okay. And Diane, if, if we are going to make a border around the edge, do we make the border at first or at the end? What's the easiest, do you think? I would start on one, again, I would start on one side and work out from there. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Okay. It doesn't really matter. The nice thing about the edge, the far outside edge, when you get done, turn it upside down, turn the whole piece upside down after everything's dry, and you can just trim those eggshells off the edge with your exacto knife. That's great. Yeah. 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 That works really well. So what you want to do is paint, get your surface out where you've got your little sketch on it. So you know where you're going and pick a little area to start. Um, and then paint it with a little bit of glue, pick up a piece of eggshell, lay it over the glued area and work in a small area because you're going to, the glue will dry before you get to the rest of it. And then yeah. you'll just have a lot of glue. That's do you find, do you, find a, you should work from the center out or does it matter or outside in? I don't think it matters too much, okay. but I would, you know, I would start in one place and work out from there. Okay. You know. And you go get some water. Yeah. Now, for your white snow, you just didn't paint some eggshells, right? Yep. I just used white eggs. Yeah, just white didn't eggs. Those at all. I didn't know if they had to have any kind of sealer or something over them. The other thing, too, is that after you've got it in there, if you want to go back and add some details or change the color of something, you, if you've got a little tiny brush, you can always paint them. Yes. You know, that's what I figure I have to do anyway, because my colors didn't come out too well when I colored them. So it'd be interesting to hear how everybody colored your eggs. I mean, you know, you could do it any way you wanted. I used, you know, good old Ceram Coat craft paint. 
Oh, you did. You used paint. Yeah. I was I trying did. different food paint. colorings and stuff like that, but I want some of it a bright red. So I'm going to use alcohol inks on it. But I, I think, think it's nice because it'll be half kind of that, you know, where the egg shell, the white will show through that color. That's what you don't get with yeah. the paint at all. I you used alcohol, alcohol ink. ink. Good. Yeah. I used alcohol ink on brown eggs. And oh, look some at that. Of them not so brown. Oh, where's Can you the, see mine? Yeah. yeah. What did you use? Nancy. Watercolor and vinegar. Nice. Watercolor paint oh, cool. and vinegar. They're pretty colors. Yeah, I used my mom's color palette. <laughs> Which is? Um, I inherited a tray that has all the written colors around it and oh. the paints that were are on it or what I used, the ones that she still had on it. Huh. But when I paint, I fill what she has written around it to play with. <laughs> <laughs> That way I paint with my mom. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I didn't this paint mine. Um because I I'm doing a I'm doing a um stepping stone and then oh. a, a rose in the center. So I want the rose to look good. So I thought I should paint that after. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, get my drawing. I really wanted to do this because I wanted actually wanted to do it in real life. I a couple of years ago I was having a lot of trouble with one of my hands and I kept dropping my dishes. Mm. And you know, and they wouldn't break completely. Of course, it would just, you know, take a big piece off the side or something like that. And I said, Oh, I'm just gonna save these and make a mosaic something someday. And they're of course <laughs> all stacked up outside and in, in um in my workroom out in the garage, you know, along with all the other things that I won't throw away. <laughs> but I've never gotten around to it. And, and they're really kind of too thick to do mosaics with. So I guess they're going in the trash. Unless I can find something else to do with broken dishes. <laughs> well, I know someone who could use them. Don't throw them away. Uh, a woman knitting group uh, is was an art teacher in high school and has a master's in art and she uses uh, broken dishes and makes mosaics on top of oh in kitchens she did a kitchen wall with them that were gorgeous yeah, that's, that's exactly wow. the kind of thing I was thinking about doing and uh, ah. but meanwhile I'm just using some of them for you know mixing paint and <laughs> holding pencils <laughs> How's everybody doing? Any questions? Is it going along okay? Yeah. yeah. I'm having a learning curve, but I'm getting it. Looks good, Cheryl. <laughs> Looks real good. Yep. Now we go to the next darker color. This is a really, really fun idea, Diane. Thank you again. Yeah. You know, when I looked online, they had this as an activity to do with your kids. <laughs> it was one of those, you know, on a rainy day, mm -hmm. have your kids make eggshell mosaics. And mm. uh, not in this scale. Not in this scale, no. Have you ever poured anything over your project? I was just when you're thinking done? that. When you're done? 
Um, well, I painted over the whole thing with a little bit of, um, you know, just uh, ceram coat varnish. Okay. I, I think I used, I don't know if I use satin or gloss or whatever, because it's kind of shiny. And, you know, it, it kind of flowed over. So it flowed into in between a little bit. Um, I don't know, sometimes mosaics are grouted and sometimes they're not. So you could yeah. do that or not. I was thinking of doing like a clear glass pour over the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 Like that's a resin. Kind, that's kind of what I did. Kind of. You know, I think it's a good idea anyway, because I think it really kind of seals them in and makes sure that stuff's not going to fall out later. Yeah. Which would I be plan on using the crystal mod podge. Yeah, that should work good. Because it'll make it look like glass. Oh, yeah. yeah. That'll look nice. I haven't heard of crystal Mod Podge. I've just heard of regular Mod Podge. That yeah. sounds nice. tries clear and it gives it kind of a sparkle. So yeah. it looks like glass. Oh yes. You know, yeah. I've never used Mod Podge. So how does it how does it differ from using like a thick gloss varnish? Or is it that stays like? kind of water soluble. So if you actually got it wet, it would lift. <laughs> oh. So you would probably want to use varnish. But I'm not going to take this in the bathtub. Marsha, I expected to hear more from you. This is the time that you come alive, isn't it? <laughs> Marsha gone? She may have had to go. No, pick she's up the there. Bar. Oh, is she? Probably, uh, probably muted. No, no, she's just being quiet. <laughs> that was directed at me. I'm folding. Package boxes. Oh, <laughs> swap. Oh, well, you're not doing this project. Oh, I'm. I'm. I've got some eggshells painted. <laughs> well, there you go. All right. It's surprising how few eggshells you need. I have enough here for the more than enough for the entire group. <laughs> <laughs> to do every day this month. Oh no, I found I had to eat an awful lot of eggs. <laughs> <laughs> My husband took care of that for me. He's a two egg every morning guy. Wow. Nice. I just don't have one anymore. So it's all. Yeah, there you go. Evelyn had to keep her husband from, from throwing the eggshells away. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. I've had these on my kitchen counter for almost two weeks, <laughs> like this little science project I've got going <laughs> So Karen, are you pretty much settled into your new studio? Karen. Um, no, I made a studio and then I decided to make it a guest room instead. Oh, oh. So I took it all apart. Oh okay. my goodness, what a lot of work. Yeah, it's been a lot of work for sure. Um, can you can you converge? Yeah, I I I I don't mind working at the kitchen table, you know. <laughs> so that's kind of what I'm going to be doing. And mm -hmm. I I just I have two teenagers that may or may not move out in the next. I mean, one of them's 20 and one's 18, so eventually they leave, <laughs> right? Well, if you start well, working in the keep either, coming then. back if they're like my kids. <laughs> Yeah, so I when one hear. of them goes. I have one that's 57 and he keeps coming back <laughs> <laughs> every few years. So uh, I don't know. Oh, yes, the hope is they'll leave and not come back, but <laughs> sometimes you get stuck with one that doesn't. Well, my dad had a solution to that. My dad's solution was to sell the house and get a boat. <laughs> oh. Ah, yes, there you go. Oh. Yeah, when they move out, take one of those rooms and turn it into a studio yep. really fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I, I, yeah, I, ma I made my daughter's room into a craft room and, and my son's room is into our uh, office. So neither one can come back. <laughs> <laughs> this is my combination uh, craft center and exercise room in here. <laughs> I, when my first son, when my first son moved away, I, I cried for two weeks. You know, I was just, oh, yeah. I was just horrible, horrible. When the second son moved away, you know, we really can use a guest room. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> and then my son hinted that he might move away and be the last one. I, I said, oh, that's great. You want a bed? You want a dresser? That's going to be my exercise. <laughs> <laughs> we'll outfit it for you. <laughs> I promise to always have a comfortable couch. <laughs> uh -huh. well, I've had a lot of parties every time he left. <laughs> <laughs> Only to find he came back a couple of years later. <laughs> My husband's sister actually put a down payment on a house for her son. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to go here, huh? <laughs> well, I think he it's... would have liked that, but I didn't want to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they were moving from California to to Washington, and so they're showing their son the house plans, and so he said, well, where's my room? <laughs> and they said, uh, you're not going, you're not going to live in this house. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> and he said... Oh, <laughs> yeah. and that's when he decided to move to Washington too. But they live on opposite sides of the state. Well, actually, diagonal oh. parts of the state. Hmm. I got to say, this is the easiest class I've ever taught. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> so far, so good. No, it's going really good. This is yeah. Neat. We gave such good instructions and we had so much notice. It's not like we're just, yeah. well, this with, you know, imagining how we wanted to do it. <laughs> well, plus the other thing I found when I was looking online is like every time I would look at a different website, somebody else was doing this, but using a different technique. So I think, you know, you can pretty much do anything you want. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unlike yeah. other things sometimes. But it's good to have something to start with. It is. And, you know, so at least I can tell you, okay, here's what I did anyway. Yeah. <sighs> nice to have a jump off point. What kind of glue are we using? Just white glue? I, you know, um, I think I use tacky. But just I'm using white glue and it's working fine. You just want something that's going to dry clear. Okay, so Elmer's is okay too, huh? Oh, should be okay. You mean just, like this? And, and keep the glue to a yeah, keep the glue to a minimum. You know, just don't use any yeah. more than you have to. You don't want it oozing out everywhere when you smash down. Oh, okay. Crap, crummy. Uh, All right. I really like uh, the quick dry tacky glue. It's one of Eileen's glues. I do too. I like it a lot. I recently got some of that ultimate glue and. Well, how's that? Well, um, mm -hmm. it grabs really fast. Yeah. Which can be good. Uh -huh. Not always. <laughs> for this, I don't think so. Yeah. No, for this, you don't want. It's not good for this. Kind of yeah. thick too. Where where did you find it? Um, here it is. Um, Hobby Lobby. Oh, uh huh. That's what I was gonna say. That's where I found it down here in California. Oh. So it's um, I don't know. It's not as, it's not as, it's a flexible glue, but it's not as flexible as tacky. It's not as rubbery. <laughs> so I would say it's, it's more like Elmer's, uh -huh. but it grabs faster than Elmer's. Uh -huh. I don't know. Really? You think that, oh, I always thought it was thicker than Elmer's. 
It's yeah, it is thick. It is definitely. So mm -hmm. instead of a bristle brush, I'm using this silicone brush. And mm -hmm. it's the greatest glue applicator. And oh, so it works perfect for this. That's a good I'm idea. I've never thought of using those. I use those a lot with my uh, paper clay. I'm using this with a little bit of wax on it. Ah, so the wax helps pick up, pick up the pieces? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this little tray, I can shake them and get them separated so I can take my best pick. <laughs> like a jigsaw puzzle. It's yeah, it's from very one of those meditative. Diamond yeah. painting kits. Yeah. It's interesting that when you smash the pieces with the eraser, it doesn't smash it into smithereens. It, it does give you nice yeah, mosaic. Yeah, it does give you good cracks. Yeah. I'm not making any cracks. It just smashes and then stays all together. So what am I doing wrong? Well, what you can you push them apart with your knife. What are you pushing oh. it onto? What's underneath the eggshell? Cardboard. That should work. Maybe your, maybe your cardboard's a little soft. That could be. Oh, cushioning. maybe I'll put it on. Um, okay, I'll put it on some fun, fun foam. Try that. Maybe if you put it on um, like a piece of glass or. Or maybe this cardboard here. I do have it on a piece of glass. I've got the cardboard on a piece of glass. The card I stock. Bet. I mean, it's just card stock like this. You know, white uh -huh. card stock. Know. But it's uh, maybe, your, maybe your eraser is soft. I don't know. Maybe try a different eraser. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't Who know. knows? We'll try some more. I'm just starting. I've never gotten a silicone brush. This is something new for me. I'm going to have to. So it's, it's just a lump of silicone rather than an act, or is there an actual brush on it? Well, it's a kit with about um, half a dozen different tips. And you can see this, uh -huh. this one uh -huh. is a point. Uh-huh. This one is a chisel. Uh-huh. Oh, those do look like they'd be handy. Yeah. So a clay shaping kit. A number of things. You can paint with them when you want. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of paint. Is that a Hobby Lobby find? Do you think? Yes. Or? Yeah. I'm going tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, they're not anything new. They've been around for, you know, forever, but, you know, they're just not something that, you know, is as common as regular brushes, bristle brushes. Well, I had to look and you might even have to ask somebody because they're not with the regular paint brushes. No, so, they should be with the Sculpty clay shaping tools. Right. Oh, oh okay. Oh, okay. Did you have a lot of people signed up for swaps in Portland, Marsha? Oh, I don't remember how many. I know I've got the sheets made up for when they were would bring their swaps in to sign in, you know, and all. But well, I know I we sent remember. ours in, what was it, almost two and a half years ago? Yeah. <laughs> the ones the club made. Back when life was normal. I didn't think there was a very large turnout for the online house party swap. There were 36 people all together. And one person sent in a package of 144. Wow. So she's getting hers back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, put, I'll yeah. put three in the house party helpers 
hard, but her 15, she's getting back. And the half inch, there was four people. So they're getting several of each person's. <laughs> well, you're talking about swaps. I'm sorry. I was thinking the grab bag. Oh, uh-huh. You don't do in the grab bags, are you? No, no. Oh, I did. Okay, okay. But some of this stuff might go I, in. I got bags. confused there for a minute. It's been so long. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know if they'll have grab bags like on the, I don't know where they would have them. If it would be on um, the garage sale items or, or what. Yeah. So I'm guessing they're sending the grab bag items out with those people that everybody that signed up when they get their box it's got that kind of stuff in it yeah i i don't know um i mean the only thing i signed up for was shannon's class so i don't oh which one see, the one with the um the i guess it's a silver cabinet oh yeah right evelyn and i are taking that too yeah i opened the box today and looked at it I noticed that she included sandpaper. That was really yeah. great. <laughs> she always does. Shannon's an awfully good teacher. Yes. She is. I've taken a couple of her classes before. I was really impressed. She's also very good with wood. She's so good. Yeah. Well, this worked out well. I had the idea. I took a, a round circle that I had gotten ready for to be a tabletop, and I found a bottle cap that's just almost that size and put it like this. And then I painted the edges and used it to. Oh, back. cool. Yeah, yeah that's a great. Idea. Yeah. It turned out pretty well. It's great when that happens. Yes. Those, those good ideas are getting uh, fewer and fewer as the time goes by. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you have just as many ideas, you just don't remember them all. That's yes. right. Del, are you trying to do some of this or are you just observing? <laughs> and she might not be there yet. <laughs> I'm observing. I'm okay. observing. I didn't get a chance to color my, my eggs today. That's okay. So I'm going to try tomorrow. You can hear what it's all about. Yes. But I do have eggs ready. I just didn't okay. get a chance to color them. <laughs> Good shell. So is anybody having any issues with trying to trim your shape after you've glued the eggshells down? Or is that going okay? It's going yeah. okay. Sometimes yeah. I'm I mean, breaking instead of getting a clean cut. I think I'm pushing the wrong way. The exacto knife's such a help. Yeah, that's what I'm using.
Oh, that was me breaking an old egg. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah, are you observing or trying to work on it or what? I'm working on it. What are you doing? I'm making a heart with different colors in it. Oh, how pretty. Is it going I'm to be observing? I'm observing every single thing except I can mostly only see the top of people's heads. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's. Oh, thank you. Thank I you. I know. Nancy. <laughs> Jeez, I hope I don't have any lice crawling around. <laughs> oh, Let me know either. if you see anything moving up there, will you? Oh, oh that's disgusting. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's pretty disgusting. Uh, we sometimes have some very interesting conversations on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> But I did teach school, and lice is a, is a fact of uh, that's right. That's right. It's a fact of life in the schools. Yeah. What What did you teach? Special ed. Uh, I taught. I was a speech therapist uh, for a few years, and then I had a special class of developmentally delayed preschoolers. Oh, wonderful! Good for you. So, you know, lice and everything else was a part of it. <laughs> yeah. And we did toilet training too. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Anything else you'd like to know? <laughs> <laughs> or not. So when you talk disgusting, I've seen the worst. Mm. It's been a while though. You know, the weird thing is, though, I've been retired now 20 years, and I um, I still have nightmares. <laughs> I call them nightmares about being called back to work. Oh. <laughs> everything's different, you know, and it's I go in and there's no supplies and there's all of a sudden these little little kids show up. I have nothing in the room. There's no, you know, and they've. <laughs> I'm going, why, why did I at the age, I remember the most recent one, I said, why at the age of 80 did I go back? <laughs> why did I say I'd do this? <laughs> I mean, I used to love it, but I mean, you know, it's a little much for me. It would be a little much for me now. Well, yeah. so it seems that so much is different. Yeah. And everything, it is so different from what I hear from other people. And yeah, I, I just think, oh my. You think of the challenges they have. Yeah. I can't imagine teaching on Zoom. Well, I wouldn't have been able to. I would have had to be in person the whole time if I were still teaching the kids I did because yeah. you know, oh, they, three yeah, to six didn't. year old three to six year old developmentally delayed children are not going to be able to sit and do anything on a zoom because yeah. you practically have to sit on them to get them to sit in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> not quite. I'm, uh, but I, you know, right. I understand. They're really cute. They were so cute, but not always. Well, I'm sure you have a lot of grateful parents. Pardon me. About I'm sure that. you have a lot of grateful parents. Oh, yeah. Parents were a big part of it, too. So spent a lot of time with a lot of parents. Karen, what are you making? Karen Lambert. I'm doing a stepping stone. Cool. And what about Karen Reed? Uh oh, she's not talking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty, pretty colors. Is it a? It's a bird. Oh, it is a I bird. Got it. That's nice. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Oh, yeah. yeah. Kara, that's gorgeous. That is neat. Wow. Tell who the artist is. He looks yeah. like he knows what she's doing. <laughs> yeah. I have no clue. I'm just 
Maybe Karen is quite the artist. Both of oh, our Karens cool. are very That's artistic. very nice. Julie, how about you? <laughs> Concentrating. <laughs> Really? What are you uh, making? Me? Yeah. Oh, I'm making a, a table top. Okay. Oh, wow. I'm putting the borders on. These eggs were such pretty colors that I kind of wanted to show them off against the dark background. So we'll, we'll see how it turns out. All right. It's Go mainly. Ahead. So much fun to do. Oh. Joanne. Yeah. <laughs> Show and tell, Joanne. All right, hold on. I've gotten oh, that far on my flowers. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. That's yeah. good. So now I'm filling in the background, which is dark blue against gray, which is fighting me. I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> Heavy. Oh, Kathy. Oh, sorry. You talking to me? <laughs> me? I just did a, I took a Dollar Tree table and I cut the center out and I'm just doing some circles just to, oh, to play beautiful. with it. Oh, so, good idea. And then I'm going to pour some resin over the top. I think I'm going to try and rub in some grout on the inside just to see what happens and wipe it off with a wet mm -hmm. paper towel or something. And then yeah. pour the resin over the top just to see what happens. Really nice. Thank you. Cheryl. Well, I'm doing my little table. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love your colors. Yeah, yeah me too. Thank you. I'm trying to figure out how much space to leave in between the pieces. I want to show the the border or what's underneath it and make them look like a mosaic, but I'm tending to kind of pile them too close together. I think I have to change. <laughs> this first one is going to be a very experimental one. Oh yeah. That's what I figure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just put mine as close together as I could. Well, you're in a whole different class of people, Diane, the way you do no, that. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> Everything Diane does is little. Oh, give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> Boo, not true. And do you have anything to show us? I had a big day. I did something I've been looking forward to for a long time. I went and got the paint. I cho finally chose the paint for my big green dollhouse that I inherited that I want to change to a big cream color dollhouse. Good for you. Nice. I came back a with the one. There's a paint. I wish I could spray it, but it's too big to take outside. <laughs> That's kind of meditative also. You just take a wall at a time. Well, I, I, just the roof, I'm going to redo the roof in color, so, and it has cedar shakes in it, so I have to put the, put a base coat on first. Mm -hmm. I got lots of advice at the, the two paint stores I went to. <laughs> they did understand the size you were working, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, nobody ever calls me except when I get on something like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course. I'm turning my phone off. That's three phone calls I've gotten since. Oh, my started. gosh. That's and crazy. I don't get that in a month. Yeah. I know. <laughs> that's what I mean. Nobody calls me. And then three in the last not even an hour that we've been on here, right? I hope everybody's okay. No yeah. emergencies. 
Oh, well, somebody was canceling a thing we had scheduled for the end of this week. And then somebody else who was supposed to be a part of it wanted to know if I still wanted to do it without that other person. And I said, yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go ahead with it. <laughs> Nancy. Oh. <laughs> Is there something you can show us yet? I'm putting the edge on a table. Ooh, wow. Pretty. That's a cute table. It, that was, is. it says Ted made 1980. Wow. wow. So it's made by somebody and I'm putting the edge and I'm doing the top, but it's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> They're so fast. I have this little tiny heart I'm trying to fill in with tiny eggshells and I'm fast at everything Nancy's always the first one to finish <laughs> wow I am so behind here but let's let's, let's tell not. the truth <laughs> I, I'm always fast and I'm always sloppy and the only reason I'm a glass blower is because it gets my attention <laughs> <laughs> something about 2000 degrees torch you can't look away no. Deborah, can you show us anything? No, not yet. Deborah. No, because I'm just watching. Okay. Yeah. So, how, however, if you guys don't mind for a minute, Diane, can I ask you just a little bit of, of an overview since I'm not doing it, it, it in front of me? Um, it looks like you guys all pretty much broke your eggshells down into mosaic size pieces, right? Now, and, well, large I mean, pieces. On purpose. You don't want to, you don't want to. I did this. Tiny size scrunch, right away. Scrunch, scrunch. Like, oh, I don't know <laughs> if you can see this size. Yeah, I thought Nancy's looked pretty small. Um, but I'm just crunching them in my fingers. Okay. Well, it's mine, I'm nice. pushing I mine after I get them on there. I'm, I'm, but I'm using fairly tiny pieces, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it only makes sense. It kind of has to look to scale. And so then, so then to start it, Diane, if I understand correctly, let's say you started with your tree, you just painted the glue on the tree and you put as you put your mosaics on your mosaic on it. Yeah. And then you could trim the edges of the tree because sort of by definition, there's no glue under those parts. Right. But what you want to do is glue it, smash it, glue it down and smash it first, let it dry a little bit and then trim the tree shape. And uh, yeah, so it doesn't pop yeah. up. That's right. Yeah. And so you smash it to make the pieces even smaller. Yes. Right. Right. Push okay. them apart. That's the trick. Okay. Part. I got it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm trying to no, I'm visualize. The I'm the big expert. Like I just <laughs> one thing. <laughs> I'm visualizing because all I see is the top of people's heads. Right. <laughs> well, you can do it any way you want. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just... really smashing mine into really little pieces. I got there. You go, or you can leave them in big chunks. It's just whatever. Yeah, it you depends want. what you're doing, kind of. But it does. By definition of what I'm doing here, my pattern is. When I get there, I'll show you. So uh, when you smash them you're smashing them hard enough that they sort of separate from each other so that you see yeah. some grout, right? Yeah. Right. And if they okay. don't, you they help try them. To, they may not do it on their own. You may have to kind of separate them a little okay. bit with your exacto knife. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. Or in my case, I'm using tweezers. Yeah. That's what I'm doing too. Will work too. Even the point, the tip of a um, toothpick will probably work fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just happen to always work with tweezers, so. Mm -hmm. Tweezers are my friends too. They are one of my absolute necessity pieces. That and an X-Acto knife are total necessities for me. Yep. Barbara, do you use like regular tweezers or reverse tweezers? Uh, they're regular tweezers, but I use curved tweezers like uh, can you see them? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I use curved ones yeah. for almost everything. I've learned to use yeah. them and I really like them. So 
It's like having little tiny fingers. Yeah. Well, I my fingers don't work so well. <laughs> you know? I do. I do. I'm a tweezer addict. I can't pass a piece of pair of tweezers. I have a basket full of so many different kinds of tweezers. Oh yeah, I, I have, excuse me, baskets and baskets. And ask me about my, um, what do you call the tools, the little ball, the stylus tools. Oh, oh yeah. I have, tell, me, uh, tell us about your stylus tool. I think I have 50 <laughs> styluses. <laughs> Why does anyone need that? No. Are they really different sizes, Barbara? Oh, yeah. No, some of them are the same, but I have taught flowers. And uh, so I have them so I can give them to students, not, do, you know, but so I have them for students when I teach them at things. So that makes sense. What flowers? Uh, paper what? flowers, miniature flowers. You know, you need a stylus to curl them and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Any of you have done miniature flowers, but I'm, I'm afraid to ask how many different kinds of paper punches you have. Oh, I don't have that many, but I, well, really? I do have. I actually do have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we have not a, very yeah. not very many is a relative term for Barbara. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not very many compared to I counted my paintbrushes, but then I found more, and I had over <laughs> two hundred little. 200 little paint brushes and then I found a whole bag more of them oh my gosh and I didn't even count those I said this is ridiculous absolutely ridiculous it's amazing it just over the years how much stuff you collect I've got I've got 45 different paper um paper punches I, can, I don't wow. know how this happened yeah, I, I exactly. have no idea oh yeah but see I belong I have when I lived in um Palo Alto in Cal you know I've lived in California most of my life, except for when I lived in Oregon. And um, when, when I lived down in, in Palo Alto, we started a club that was just making miniature flowers and plants. And we called ourselves the Petal Pushers. Oh. And, um, so as a group, we bought a lot of punches. Then yeah. when we kind of people started moving away and we kind of disbanded then we divided up the the punches between everybody and then when I moved up here to the mountains I live in Grass Valley Nevada City area now I don't know if you know that but it's yep. about an hour north a little northeast of uh, Sacramento and uh in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada mountains on the way to Lake Tahoe. Anyway, when I moved up here, we had a we have three clubs up here, so we started doing. Uh, I just restarted the pedal pushers again. So we <laughs> we have a flower uh, plant club up here, and I got to tell you, between us all, we must have hun we have hundreds of bunches. How oh, fun! So do you all make the same flower at the same time or do you just get together and make whatever you no, want? No, we do. Well, when we do meetings, we usually do all the same flower at the same time because one person will have the project that month or something, mm -hmm. unless we're doing a long-term project, which we've done a couple of, but, you know, and then we just collect our plants and flowers and where they, you know, you can always use a plant or flower in your miniatures somewhere. Oh, absolutely. And with the Good Sam show, I don't know how many of you have ever been to the Good Sam show down in San Jose. It's probably the largest miniature show on the West Coast. Um, it was my favorite all the years I lived in California, I'll tell you. Uh, and uh, so I have taught a couple of classes there. And I've taught a couple of things at, you know, name conventions and stuff. Not flowers so much there, but I did teach something. What did I teach at Philadelphia one year or something? I don't know. But anyway... And I do kids classes. I've done flowers with kids. 
Oh, how wonderful. How, how small do you make them with kids? Do, uh, they one make... inch. Oh, one inch scale always. Yep, mm -hmm. we do one inch scale. But they're, you know, I say nobody under eight because they can't do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sit still. <laughs> And they're pretty simple ones that I do with kids. But anyway, so I have a lot of equipment, you know, a lot of papers and stuff. So that's why I have all those styluses. But really, at this point, I don't do that so much anymore. And I think I need to get rid of stuff. I'm trying to, but it's really hard to get rid of stuff, you know? Uh -huh. Isn't it? It's the worst. Especially hobby stuff. Yeah, you know, everything's important. Mm -hmm. but my daughter-in-law is going to have such a fit when she see, goes, starts going through stuff when I die. <laughs> we I just have this vision that they'll just call somebody and haul it away. Yeah. <laughs> well, I did write up, I wrote up uh, a thing about my miniatures and how to dispose of them. So <laughs> they better follow it or they will. <laughs> So where do you oh, live yeah. now? I live in uh, the Grass Valley, Nevada City area oh, of okay. California. Yeah. We where? had a condo on the Nevada side of Tahoe. Oh, OK, yeah. But actually, growing up, my grandparents had a, a house in Carnelian Bay at Tahoe. Oh, wow, that's beautiful area. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, it was it was fun. We'd go there every summer. So I'm an hour. I'm probably an hour from Tahoe. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly where that is. Cute towns. Yeah. But kind of scary these days. Fire wise, yes. yes. Fire and snow. Well, well snow. Uh, we don't snow. Yeah, we don't get that much snow here. Although we did have more snow than I've ever seen in the twenty years I've lived here now, uh, right after Christmas. But usually it's not a lot. But who knows what's coming because everything's changing, you know. Yeah. But at Tahoe, my husband always wanted to have his kids up at Christmas time. Yeah. And half the time they got snowed in and couldn't get their flights. They had to cancel their <laughs> airline flights. Oh, we used to rent a place up at uh, Homewood mm -hmm. when the kids were in uh, junior high and high school because they loved to ski. So we would go up there for a week between uh, Christmas and New Year's and they would ski and I learned to do cross country skiing. I've never been a, much oh. of a skier, but. I was always the person who dropped the kids off and picked them up. Yeah. <laughs> always a good thing to do. Somebody had to do it. But my brother and sister both lived at Tahoe when our kids were young. Oh, and nice, that was nice. The school yeah. system had what they call ski and skate week. Right. between Christmas and New Year. Cool. Or maybe it was, it must have been after everybody else went home. Yeah, it might have um, been in January, right? Yeah. And so that's when my kids went to visit their cousins. <laughs> Good. Because then they were like um, <laughs> temporary Tahoe residents and they got to, they, they would open the ski lifts to kids so you didn't have to buy lift tickets you just skied oh wow i wonder i bet they don't do that anymore i have no idea nobody lives there well actually i say nobody lives there anymore but as soon as we sold our tahoe condo then my niece who lived there when she was a little girl um just bought a place so we've had tahoe presents since a long time. I don't know, when my dad was a child. So about the 20s, 1920s. Wow. wow. Just think how getting there was then. Yeah. I have a picture of my dad 
but actually my dad's dad so my grandfather died when my dad was 12 Ooh. and so he got a special driver's permit at maybe the age of 13 mm -hmm. because it was a situation where a well special need I guess yeah and so it shows him looking like he's 12 standing outside this antique car which was probably fairly new then mm -hmm. <laughs> um, on one of the roads going up to Tahoe so the the venue is all rocks you know how the yeah it's yeah. very dry until you actually get under the trees <laughs> but he he shared driving with his mother wow he was an only child mm. How's everybody doing? Any questions? Any problems? Is it going? Well, it okay? does go slowly, oh. but I think I'm getting there. One piece at a time. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, actually, they're like five pieces at a time ah. <laughs> because you smush them. Yep. Oh, I think you were gone when people were showing. Do you have something to that you can show us what you're working on? <laughs> Evelyn, you're muted. We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, Ooh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. It's, it's okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. It's a flower. Mm -hmm. Very good. So actually, while we're at kind of a steady state here, I wanted to let you see, Marsha, can you make me big? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh -huh. now it, does it look backward to you guys? It looks backward. No, it's right. No, no, it's okay. Fine. Okay, so this is the beginning of the She Shed project. Oh, wow. And so I'm showing like kinds of, structures so you have to choose a structure and then a, a list of what you need to do before our march meeting and then other steps involved here so things to think about this, this is your planning stage so it says the plan and then it talks about choosing a style and a color and color palette and of course that refers to diane's color presentation. <laughs> so anyway, that's the first page, first step. And Excellent. I'm working on the um, work surface. And this is just in junky card um, chipboard, thin chipboard, so it's all wonky. But for you, you can use anything you want for your work surface. But for those who want to make one, I thought this design would be good in that it has these, <laughs> I don't know which way to point, um, dividers, so you can make it as long or short as you want. And so once you measure the, the dividers and the end pieces, then you can size the, um, the shelves and the top accordingly. So what do you think? Yeah, okay. are, gonna, are the instructions going to be for cutting them out of that board? There will be instructions two ways. One will be um, patterns so mm -hmm. that you can, they'll have measurements so you can I, measure and cut to the pattern. And I will also make an SVG. Okay. So you can cut them on your, um, on your Cricut and cut them out of the 16 then. 16 inch wood. Okay. Or you can buy a kit or <laughs> you can get something out of your stash. <laughs> but I, I thought I would make something that, um, well, for those who like to make things. Mm -hmm. well, that looks like you could also cut it out of Matterboard and just put it together. You know, you could just- You, you know, could. An exacto knife and a good ruler. Yeah. Yes. Right. So that's the idea. You can make it two ways. 
I'm hearing everything breaking up. Is anyone else? Is it just me? It's I just think it's you. Just you. <laughs> <laughs> it always is. Hey, Julie, you live downtown. You should have good internet, not like us, those of us out in the boonies. I should. Oh, our that's... internet has gotten so much better over the past year. Oh, good. Thank goodness. Yeah, you live in such a gorgeous place, so <laughs> I would trade any time. I take it your snow is gone. <laughs> oh, gosh, yes. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> but you know what? The damage stays. In fact, we're, tomorrow we're going to get out the chainsaw and start working. Oh. Uh, yeah. I feel we probably got a good, we probably got two good truckloads full of uh, big branches. Uh -huh. so. Any damage? Uh, well, they didn't hit anything. We got one tree that looks like it's about to come down and hit on one of our fences, but it's coming from our next door neighbor's house. So I don't know that we're going to be able to do much about it. They aren't, they don't tend to take care of things. It just, I don't know. <laughs> it's probably not going to be good. <laughs> well, there's no incentive because when the tree falls on your property, it's your tree. Yeah. Well, no, it'll fall from their property onto our fence and into our yard. Yes. And then it's your tree. All right. It's your tree. Well, that's the way it works. <laughs> that's the law. I really? Have experienced yes. it. Well, we want them to do something before it hits our fence, or they're yeah. going to have to pay for the fence to be repaired. Well, what we did was we talked to our neighbor and our neighbors are pretty cooperative and we said your tree is uprooting our yard and it's diseased so we would like to have somebody bring it down we'll pay for your tree that's interfering with our property and they, he said yeah. okay fine yeah, of course. He's probably oh, wrong. Yeah, wow. He didn't have to pay for it. So but it's neighbor, better than it falling on our garage. If yeah, your neighbor's yeah. tree falls on your garage, it's your tree? Yep. It's it's yeah. your problem? Yes. My uh, what? niece had a tree fall and smash their children's bedroom when the <gasps> child just out and there, all the damage. It, it did massive damage was was their responsibility not the neighbors wow wow oh that's i don't see how that, that i mean i think i'd get a lawyer and fight that that doesn't yeah, like, this tree is sitting there and it's it's broke already broken you know halfway up the trunk it's already broken and uh it's completely on their property but if they don't do something about it it's going to be on ours well so, you need better. to work with them before it becomes your tree yeah that doesn't seem right oh, no, yeah, we can't, the problem oh. is we can't go onto their property to fix the problem well you could ask them well or not. <laughs> not a lot of communication going on there unfortunately but uh i worry about our big trees out front yeah yeah you do have a big tree We've up got, there four big trees like really big trees are you still moving cheryl oh yeah you are. <laughs> <laughs> when i have no idea yeah. <laughs> where are you gonna move we are moving to a senior living place either in eugene or in near Olympia, Washington. But that's the first I've heard about Washington. Well, I think the odds are against it. <laughs> and so that's why I'm I, I'm thinking that it's going to be Eugene and mm -hmm. rather hoping so. But Doug really wants to move to Washington. So well, I chose have... to not move to Washington years ago. <laughs> so he says it's his turn. Oh. <laughs> so I don't know. But interestingly, we did get a phone call that said one of our 
preferred floor plans was available. The only problem was it was our least preferred for floor plan and we've since eliminated it because it's not quite suitable for us. The, the floor plan here or in Washington? Here. Washington, the wait time is like three and a half or four years. Oh, wow. One of us could be dead by then. <laughs> Are these houses or apartments? The, here, they're senior apartments. In Washington, there's some of each. But the houses are are the ones. It, it's called Panorama. It's a, a very interesting development, but quite large. So that's a little scary because then I'll just be around a whole bunch of old people. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Whereas in Eugene, you know, um, you can walk out of the complex and you're in with regular people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> regular people, huh? <laughs> yeah. What I really want is somebody else to fix my dinner. <laughs> right. Okay, so you're wanting to go where you get food. Okay. Uh, yeah. So if you move into a house there, they bring you your food too? Or do you go to a dining room? You go to a dining room, which they yeah. call a restaurant. That's the Washington one. The one here, um, they have a food plan and you go to one of two dining areas or actually during COVID times, they do bring it to you. I was gonna say, I live in a seniors community and that I moved to a year and a half ago and I'm in a house here. Uh, and I guess you can have a food plan. I didn't opt for that. I live by myself and I didn't see any reason for to spend the money, but um, the people that do buy the food plan, yeah, they, they've been bringing them to their houses. Yeah. Uh, delivering them because they can't go over and eat in the restaurant when it's normal times they can go over and eat in the restaurant or the dining room whatever you want to call it uh, yeah anybody can uh i could even go over there and you know one meal at a time and go they'll just charge me for that meal uh but it's not been open since i moved here because i moved here in <laughs> a year and a half ago <laughs> yeah. um, are you the one that that lived in paradise no, I did not. Oh, no, that's good. No, but I know a bunch of people lived in are from the club there. I knew, you know, there was a miniature club up there, and uh, uh, there were eight of them, or about five of them, that got burned out. Yeah, my cousins uh, were burned out of paradise. Yeah, my mm -hmm. aunt was burned out at the age of eighty-two. Yeah. Oh, and we did a big fundraiser for them. We collected. Um, uh gift cards and sent them yeah good idea uh, to the club members not the not ever but just the miniature club and uh -huh. uh, because i well we i knew a lot of the people from up there and it was really sad yeah but they've all a uh, couple of them rebuilt but most of them relocated other places yeah yeah, I could I never I really understand that community because there are forest fires in that area. I know. And I know my aunt's house um, was just a tree canopy. If you right. had a drone and tried to take a picture of her house, you wouldn't see it. Oh, she has a place like mine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, uh, hers, those of hers, us who like living in the forest, like living in the forest and yeah the fire, forest and fires are always scary but um you you know it's just a risk you take living yeah in. well it freaked me out because yeah. i'm from california too i know about fires my brother got burned out well paradise is yeah is california and um right and I, I was born and raised here in California, so. Yeah, me too, but from Los Angeles. Yeah, and I was in the San Francisco Bay Area growing up. I didn't live in the country or in the mountains, but, but my uh -huh. grandmother had a cabin up by Sonora that we spent every summer up there. And hmm. uh, 
That's where I learned to love the mountains and the pine mm -hmm. trees and the forest and the, you know, I'm not well, a- California has a lot to offer. It is a beautiful state, but- uh, Too many people. Well, <laughs> and now with climate change, it's kind of scary. Yeah, yeah. It's not- That's but, true here too. You know what? It's no more people than- you're getting in Portland. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Well, that's that's where you, it really depends where you are, though, yeah. what, when you say too many people, because certainly Southern California is a whole nother ball game than Northern California, too. Don't you? Uh, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, gosh, yes. I live Even in the Bay Area. I lived in Southern California and Northern California and before moving here. And uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now we I live mean, out in the middle of nowhere in a town with 200 mm -hmm. people. So <laughs> yeah, you know. I live 45 minutes from San Francisco, right in the heart of it. It's uh yeah, it's crowded. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, you my, are. My but I've been reading that people are leaving California. So yay, go, <laughs> go, no, go. But more Kathy, of them. Kathy, where in. do you live? Kathy, where? Uh, I live in Martinez. By ah, Creek, I lived in, in Danville. I lived in I lived in Los Gatos before moving. Oh, Deborah's yeah. in Danville. Deborah's from Danville. Yeah. Deborah, yeah. Deborah lives in Danville. Yeah. And, and I I would just say more than there being so many people it's flipping expensive oh well yeah that that's a given well, yeah that's part of california too i pretty much don't know what all the people do for a living who live in this i mean i mean they can't all be presidents of companies no i know it's amazing how they can afford three thousand dollars a month rent for a house i don't i don't i couldn't do it but well my stepson lives in the city in San Francisco, he and his wife, and uh -huh. he works for Google and she works for Wells Fargo. Oh. And that's how you do it. They, yep. they just have nice yes, jobs, kind yeah. of corporate jobs. Yeah. It's just like up in Seattle, in the Seattle areas. So it's so. Yeah, it, it's it, exactly it, like that. Yeah. But you go out to eat and you have to wait an hour and then the restaurants are packed although i guess they're not packed now nope. <laughs> i used depends to drive, where you I go again you know from, it just depends where you want to go <laughs> i used yeah. to drive from los gatos to palo alto every day for work and it would take if i didn't leave by 5 a.m it would take me anywhere between two to two and a half hours oh my goodness. wow yeah. oh yeah right. yeah it so <laughs> and it was like if i did it on a saturday i could get there in 30 minutes what did you yeah. do uh, what did you do in palo alto uh i worked at hewlett packard ah uh, yeah yeah see that's where i lived and worked all my career was in palo alto and yeah. uh but i worked two blocks from my house i never had to deal yeah. with well there that's you go nice. that was smart Okay, so mine, day, so oh, day, oh, sorry. This is a little lumpy. Mine's a little lumpy. Gonna have to smash it down better. How's everybody so Diane, doing? Diane, I'm sitting here looking at mosaic pictures on Google Images while we talk. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, it, have you ever done anything where you were trying to do much in the way of shading? And would you do that with paints or how would so, you approach that? Yeah, so what I did was when I painted the eggshell, I did sort of a transition from a medium turquoise to a lighter turquoise. And then when I broke the pieces apart, I had some of, you know, a variation. So it's really hard to see unless you're looking at it in person. But in my sky, the eggshells at the top of the sky are darker. And then when it gets down closer to the ground, it's a lighter blue. And you did yours with craft paint, right? Yeah, I just did painted it with craft paint. Would Would you mind showing us that one more time? Now that I know I, what I it is, I don't think you can see that level of the detail, but I will. Ugh. 
I don't have my iPad on anymore. I guess I could log. Oh, back. don't Let's worry. If you... Here, hold on. Let me try a little more light would be good, a good thing. Okay. So I don't know if you can see that. And it's, yeah. it's pretty subtle, but if you look towards the top, you actually, you can see. Oh, yes. I yeah. can see that. Blue at the top and then it can. Yeah. Work. Yeah. Yep. And I, I, now that I know you used craft paint after we were talking about it all, that worked quite well. Yeah, it did really you, did. And did you water it down a lot? Uh, actually, I didn't water it down at all. I, I made a, an effort not to, I mean, to keep the paint completely thick so that it would cover evenly. Um, if you water, if you use a lot of water when you're painting the craft paint on the eggshell, it's really streaky. Now, if you like streaky, that's a good thing. I didn't want mine streaky. I wanted okay. solid colors. So, okay. thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. Like I said, you can't. I don't think you can do make any mistakes or do anything wrong in this project. I think there's just so many ways to do it. <laughs> Well, there's so many different kinds of mosaics too. Yeah, exactly. I just don't think you can go wrong. <laughs> well, it's a lot of fun, Diana. Yes, it. it is. Yes, it's a thank project, you. You know, thank you very much. I'm going to take my leave. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It was fun. Yeah, okay. liked it a lot. <laughs> Night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. You, Kathy. Okay. Well, I'm to the little fill-in pieces. It's quite tedious. Oh yeah, that is tedious. It was that nice to done, finish that project. Tool, Nancy, looks like it would work fantastic. I'm sorry, Karen, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh no, I, I was just saying it was nice to finish a project in one hour. <laughs> 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 True. You're better than I am. I can't finish it in an hour. <laughs> this is not coming out quite like I wanted it, but it's okay. It's a learning experience. Many of you are doing the um, 50th anniversary thing. Yeah. I I signed up to make the roses. I got the rose kiss the day of it. And then I had the wrong time because I I, it said two o'clock. So I thought that was. Oh, yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> I see the Eastern time. By There's it. a video of it on the create site. Yeah. Oh, is oh OK. You go Here in. And is the, uh, February. Allison Pierce's crystal bowl. Nice. Yeah. That's oh. really cute. Mm -hmm. but that's the, oh, that uh, nice. I was still talking about but the oh that's yeah and she's doing that on the 27th of February uh, right. as a lunch and learn but th they're all being videotaped and they're in under lunch and learns oh I didn't Great. realize Thank you so much I felt really badly missing that I was so excited when the kit came that day and Pam did an excellent job on the video I will definitely watch it. So anyone can watch that video, even if you didn't pay for the class or? It wasn't a paid class. It was a free demo. Oh, OK. Uh, yeah, anybody can watch the Lunch and Learns. You just go on and you find uh, and create. It's under, oh, what is it under? Uh, yeah. Let's go on and look. I'll, I'll look. Uh, do you need workshops or gift and gab or whatever if they're paid you know where you have to sign up and, and pay something those are recorded but only for the people who registered right the okay. it's but, uh the the lunch and learn under lunch and learns are under free live events hmm. Free live events, and you look go to lunch, and then there's a pull down menu that says lunch and learn. Okay. And then Good. the other thing you can go to fun and games, and they've got videos and more videos, and they've got name day videos, and they've got so there's lots of, and there's 
tutorials. There's all kinds of information on there if you play around with the different places. They've Great. got written tutorials, drawings, I mean, a lot of things going on on Create. Yeah, that you don't have hour have or so a lot of free stuff. Check it out. And make notes of where, where something is that you'd like to go back and see. Yeah. And even the kit was quite reasonable, I thought. It was the yeah. flower kit, you mean, or the or the vase kit? Uh, the flower kit. I, I'll, I'll order the vase kit and make a real yeah. point. I felt so stupid. I think that was the, the worst of it. Yeah, Why? Oh. Well, I got mine done, guys. I, I think I'll I'll um, show it next time after I have it painted. Okay. Um, but I'm gonna say good night. Okay, right. good to see so, you. Oh, good to see you. you too. We'll see you again next time. Okay. Great. Bye. Nice to meet you guys. Or see you okay. again if I knew you already. <laughs> <laughs> next um, next month at our meeting. Well, my flower is turning into a, a bunch of grapes, I've decided. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I'll stop the recording. Yeah, it's probably enough. <laughs> I don't know oh. how the recording's going to help with